Well, everybody, welcome. I'm very excited to be here because this is my first event where I wasn't talking to a bunch of doctors and I can be a little bit more free. I'm also the oldest person speaking who doesn't have a book. Uh, maybe there's hope for me in the future. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my story. So I um, started life as a family physician. My dad was a family doc. I remember going to the doctor's lounge and hearing how diet was going to kill everyone. And so when I was 22, I gained a lot of weight. And I would fight it off and gain a lot of weight and fight it off. And actually, sadly to say, I've gone through many relationships where the parting comment was, well, I just couldn't get used to your weight. Well, I was heavy when you met me. <laughs> and um, I was lucky enough to meet my wife, Roxanne, and got married in 2011. And we had a similar story. We had both exercised our rear ends off. We had both dieted on a lot of different programs only to not do well. We relapsed. And when we met, I had honestly given up. And new love, I was literally fat and happy. Um, in 2013, her sister needed a kidney transplant. And her kidneys were literally surgically removed and we went to the hospital on the way Roxanne calls the transplant office. And they said, you have to lose 80 pounds before we test you to be a candidate. And at the time, I was a family doctor who held the typical view that bariatric surgery was dangerous, you had to regain all your weight, but it was the last ditch thing we might could do for her to be able to donate a kidney. So we go to find out about bariatric surgery. And what I found out was, number one, we have an epidemic of obesity. I found out that number two, surgery is much safer than it was when I was a resident because it was very dangerous then, back in the 80s. And that of all the people who meet criteria for bariatric surgery, only 1% get it. So next slide, please. So here we are on our honeymoon. That's a Steven Tyler lookalike. And we were having a blast, all right? I also learned something today. So I learned every day about this. I'm, you know, this is kind of like, you know the difference between the pig and the chicken for breakfast? The chicken gave an egg, the pig gave all. So I am all in. So I've left family medicine, not that I don't use the, some of those principles, but I'm a keto doc now. And I don't treat just obesity. I'm an obesity medicine specialist, but I treat patients. And patients come with medical problems. And some of those problems are being made worse by the medicines we give them. So next slide. This is Roxanne and I uh, at a recent fundraiser. And so next slide. So we both had bariatric surgery. Now one of the things I learned this morning is I knew I had metabolic syndrome, but according to Amy's presentation, I also had diabetes. So Roxanne went first. The reason she went first was she wanted to be available to give a kidney. The reason I took so long is I couldn't afford for both of us to do it the same year. All right, so then what do you do about weight regain? Roxanne researched the network, I mean, all of the internet. And she found this book called A Low-Carb Ketogenic Diet Manual. And so I ordered the manual, and she started it, and I didn't. Why? Well, I was a doctor, and I had to re be sure it was safe. So I'll tell you something about doctors. Um, Doctors are taught the scientific method, and doctors are very well attuned that sometimes things come out of medication, and you find out after a year of experience that it's killing people and they take it off the market. So you quit using that. That is normal. But to change what we were taught in medical school about diet and nutrition, which we got very little of, that's crazy, all right? So, next slide. So the first mistake was paralysis by analysis. Roxanne is getting healthier. I'm still eating low-fat Pop-Tarts, you know, ice cream. 
And I had numerous health problems. I had a thing called diastolic dysfunction, which is a kind of heart problem where my heart wouldn't relax. Sleep apnea, metabolic syndrome, pre-diabetes, according to A1C. Uh, nobody checked my insulin, okay? So once I found out, and you can do this now, one of the great things about the internet is you have access to this, to this information. Dr. Westland showed you the 31 to zero record, but you also can go to PubMed and look at some of these articles yourself. Okay, one of the things you're gonna find is that the terminology changes a lot. So low carb, LCHF, now we call keto, but there's a lot of misinformation. You know, drinking from the fire hose is an excellent thing. Well, I found out, guess what? It's safe and effective. Anybody here have that experience? <clears throat> My response was I was embarrassed and I was pretty angry that all of that had not been, had not gotten out. And so that is again part of why I'm here. I'm here to get this out. So I now work in an obesity medicine practice with Piedmont Healthcare and I'm trying to influence all of Piedmont. We're 2,100 doctors in 11 hospitals. I'm the only one practicing obesity medicine. We have two of them who just got board certified, okay? Next slide. So the next step is I was retaining salt and water. I had a little bit, I had a lot of fluid overload because I had this type of heart failure. And I started peeing myself crazy four times a night. And it was very dilute urine. And being pre diabetic, the first thing I thought was, you've got diabetes. It's the diet. It's, Something's wrong with you. Well, no, I was dumping salt and water. The next thing was, at 53 years old, I thought, I have a bad prostate. Well, luckily, it took about two weeks to get in to see the doctor, and by then, I didn't have that problem, okay? So, if you get a lot of urination, drink more water. That's pretty simple. So, next slide. So the next thing is part of the fire hose thing. Um, I found this guy online, I cannot remember the guy's name, but he was a fitness model, he liked keto, and he had about 3% body fat, all right? Well, I'm kind of a, a obsessive and an excessive in my approach at times, so I wanna look like this guy. So I get bulletproof coffee twice a day and two fat bombs. And I've had part of my colon removed, and that just doesn't work. All right? Well, why? You know, you know, I still had fat to lose. Now, I found out that Dr. Westman teaches doctors how to do this, and I had read every book I could get my hands on, and I'd gotten to the point where how do you do obesity medicine? I roll into his clinic in Durham in August of 2015, drinking bulletproof coffee, wondering why my bowels were loose. So next step, next slide. So here's the coffee. You know, if you are burning fat, so we're, the whole idea of keto is you go from a sugar burner to burning, a, burning fat. If you want this to go down, it's not great to go excessive on fat. Like Dr. Jocker said, Salt to taste, fat to taste. L listen to your body, okay? So next slide, fear of salt. So I had high blood pressure. I tended to not be a salt sensitive high blood pressure person. And so I felt pretty crappy. Bullion is your friend, bone broth is your friend, all right? If you have high blood pressure, Monitor your blood pressure or work with a doctor on this, okay? This is one of those times when you should probably seek the care of somebody who understands keto, okay? Um, next slide. Fear of dietary fat or cholesterol. <clears throat> now, when I was around 50, <clears throat> I got checking my heart and everything, and it got found out that I had these heart problems. 
And so I went and had a stress test and an echo, and yeah, you need to be on a statin. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened. What they didn't go over is my triglycerides were 256, which is sky high, and my HDL is 27. There isn't a pill for that. That's called metabolic syndrome. And in the original epidemiologic work called Framingham study, that correlated the strongest with cardiac events. There was an interheart study in Europe that showed that metabolic syndrome had the equivalent heart risk of smoking six packs of cigarettes per day. So around the time that this whole cholesterol thing was getting started, they had a drug that would lower LDL. And so we went for a 30-year LDL fascination. All right, so low-fat diet never worked. It never reduced any heart events. The studies that were done, Women's Heart Initiative, Mr. Fit, Leon Heart Study, Pretty Med, and we won't go into the details, they all failed to show benefit, and in fact, a couple of them showed harm. So without any good evidence, we said everybody should eat this way in 1977. And what it gave us was an obesity and diabetes epidemic. Um, the fat in your blood is mainly due to your carbs. Who knew, right? So there is another way. Now, the funny thing is, again, we can get doctors to change their medicines, but getting them to change how you eat is difficult. So I've been working really kind of behind the scenes with Piedmont and trying to get this whole thing started. And I've made a little progress. I got the chief dietitian to come to one of my meetings, and, and so there's some hope. So next slide. <clears throat> So too much sugar alcohol. So a lot of the products that are keto, if you get artificial sweeteners, some of them have sugar alcohol. And I got too much, and guess what, again, <laughs> right? But if you're not sensitive to sugar alcohol, don't, don't be a hater on somebody who can take it. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of good that it can be if you can stay away from the sugar and the starch, which is the same as sugar, all right? So next slide. Comparing yourself to others or unrealistic expectations. So why am I not losing weight as fast as my sister, wife, brother? Well, everybody's a little different. There are a lot of factors, you know, men tend to lose weight faster than women. Older people tend to lose weight a little slower, you know? I have to lose 50 pounds by Easter. Well, that's unrealistic. My wife and friend. So every pound matters, but remember you want to lose fat mass, body fat. So next slide. Exercise. Well, I'm not even going to start losing weight because I know I have to exercise. The corollary to that is I was encouraging patients to exercise before they were ready oftentimes. And so I also don't talk a lot about exercise to begin with. I think it has benefits, absolutely. But it, it kind of doesn't make sense if you're going from being a sugar burner to a fat burner and your body's trying to adjust to say, go hit the gym for three hours. All right, that was a mistake that I made. Um, next slide. Uh, so you lose a bunch of weight, and what do you normally do? You quit. You go back to how the government told you to eat, how your mama told you to eat, how you grew up eating and the things that you fell into and you liked. And so what I would tell you is this. This is a way of eating. This is my lifestyle. This is not a diet. I have obesity. All right? You may not see it, but boy, if I go back to the other way, you'll see it pretty quickly. There actually is a name for what I am. It's called TOFI. Has anybody heard of TOFI? It's called thin outside, fat inside. So metabolically, I still have problems. So, you know, if you lose weight, come off medicines, you don't have as many migraines, don't stop. You know, I try to give people in the clinic to think long term and short term. I want to get to that, okay, that's great, you want to lose 100 pounds, but let's work on the first three to five. 
Okay? Next slide. Listening to the media on advice on healthy eating. So first of all, the media does a terrible job conveying scientific information because they want a sound bite and they're going to tell you the thing that will get the most information, the most views, the most clicks. It's called clickbait. And so very recently we had an expert panel based on opinion only telling us that the top diets were the Mediterranean or DASH. Or that there was an opinion piece based off another study that was a very poorly done epidemiologic study. Those studies will show correlation but not causation. So this heart expert comes out and says keto will shorten your lifespan. Just understand that a lot of what is talked about comes from either somebody who has an agenda, like they want to continue to sell sugar or food or medicines or something like that, or because the study quality is bad. Um, and Jimmy's book um, does a very good job of describing kind of how you should look at studies. So next slide. Too much focus on ketosis. All right, I focus on restricting sugar and restricting starch. And at the beginning, I did all of these tests. I did the breath thing, I did the finger sticks, I did the urine sticks, all right? For most of my patients, if I make it too, too difficult, too complicated, too painful, too costly, that runs them off. And the other thing is, doc, I'm not in ketosis, I'm doing the pea stick. Yes, but you lost 12 pounds of body fat. Your waist, how do you feel? Okay? Now, if you want to check your ketones, go for it. But remember, the focus is not on the ketones. The focus is on your health and your body and how you're doing. Is your insulin dose coming down? I do that all the time. First visit. Blood pressure medicines, I get rid of the diuretics all the time. <clears throat> so next slide. Focusing on calories, all right? Let the calorie restriction happen naturally, okay? When you start, eat as much as, you, I go by page four too. It's number four in my handout. Eat as much as you want on these things. Couple of um, little caveats. Try not to eat in front of a screen. You tend to do mindless eating so you won't feel that, oh, I, I'm, I've had enough. Um, and then the calorie restriction happens naturally. So if you're hungry, eat as much as you want of these foods. Two cups of greens, one cup of non-starchy vegetables. We have some limits on mayo. Um, but don't focus on the calories. Next slide. This is a big one. Waiting too long to start. So if you don't have diabetes, blood pressure, insulin, this can be something you can start. But if you do, we do want you to get help, all right? But for me, I came to this when I was like 54 years old, all right? I'm glad I did. I just want everybody to keep promoting this thing, use the grassroots, use the internet and your sphere of influence. I'm trying to influence my family. I'm trying to influence uh, Piedmont Hospital. But not everybody will listen to you. And sometimes you need to point them to Dr. Westman or someone else, David Jockers, Amy Berger. They may listen to them and they won't listen to you. Okay? Next slide. All right, the other thing is in the medical, in the clinic, we don't judge. All right, somebody who comes in and is, looks lean, they may have had an obesity story. Someone who comes in huge, you don't know that they didn't already lose 80 pounds. Someone who's really struggling, change is hard, all right? When you try to improve your health, your body will fight you. So the first thing is not to judge. The second thing is, if you've had bariatric surgery and you come into an obesity clinic, you're welcome. If you choose not to have surgery and don't wanna go down that route, no judgment. So I kind of did it backwards, to be honest. Do I regret it? No, I've had some benefit from it. But it is incredibly 
crazy to me that people come to see me, they've had surgery, they've never tried an anti-obesity medicine or a keto diet. And I said that in the wrong order, by the way. They should have tried a keto diet first. But um, people who are on a budget, they're welcome. I love Kerrygold butter, all right? But if you can't afford Kerrygold butter, it's not a thing. So the point is, we welcome you all. We want to push this out to as many people as we can touch. And we want people to get help with managing the medical problems, okay? So uh, next step or next slide. So the other is kind of your head, right? Keto is hard, right? Keto is not the way I've been taught to eat. You know, Dr. Westman, babies are born in ketosis. And, you know, whole groups of people, you know, specifically if you're from the upper latitudes, like the Inuit Indians, there are people who grew up as a people who reproduced. They ate a keto diet, not because they loved the keto diet, they ate what they had or what they could have. You know, the paleo people, you know, they didn't have farms back then with a lot of grains. They had grains. They ate what they had when they could get it. So I believe the low-fat diet is the fad diet. So I try not to get in a fight with my medical colleagues. You have to be diplomatic. But, you know, the thing is the guidelines were wrong, but you won't ever hear somebody from the ADA or the Heart Association stand up and apologize, all right? Unfortunately, it was wrong. And we've all been too much of a victim of that, and so I, I want to encourage you to be empowered to change your life by changing how you eat. Pretty simple. Next slide. So this is my office address and phone number. My first name is William. I go by Jeff, so if you're looking me up, all right? So we focus on treating patients, all right? And I teach the same meal plan Dr. Westman is gonna teach. And we try to individualize and we work with people. Um, we work with overcoming barriers. Sometimes those are financial. Sometimes if you didn't quite understand, so I had a lady come in, Doc, I'm following it 100%. What did you have for breakfast? Steel cut oatmeal. <laughs> but I cooked it on the stove, right? It's from Ireland. How much do you eat? About a cup, 54 grams. What did you have with it? Oh, a glass of orange juice and a banana. <laughs> All right, so again, follow-up is important, all right? I had one patient. Some people can eat carbs occasionally, and some can't. I had one lady who, on January 28th, something stressful happened. She started eating carbs, started with some little brownie bites, and then she went into a full-blown relapse of her binge eating. So, again, you know, it's like Dr. Westman said, how many people here believe carbs make you hungry? All right? Focus on the sugar and the starch. Eat when you're hungry. Stop when you're comfortably full. Salt to taste, fat to taste. Yes, you can have red meat. You can have the fatty fish. You can have the eggs. Egg whites, by the way, that's another fad. Don't do the egg whites. All right? I try to keep this very simple. I try to keep it un not judgmental. And I try to get people off medicines where I can. All right? <laughs>